Hey guys, this is Janet of Traveling with Autism. We are here uh, in Florence, Alabama and sitting with Sheriff Rick Singleton of Florence, uh, Alabama and the Lauderdale Sheriff's Department, is that correct? Lauderdale County. Yeah. County. And um, we just wanted to come in and meet with him for a few minutes, kind of tell his story and um, what got him started. I know you started out with wrestling and eventually moved into law enforcement. What kind of, you know, started you with wrestling and then how'd you get involved in law enforcement? Well, and when I was a kid, I liked both. And uh, I grew up watching wrestling on TV. And the uh, first wrestling match I ever attended, uh, I was in a group at church called Royal Ambassadors, and our counselors carried us to a wrestling match one night to see a live bear wrestle, Victor the Bear. Oh. And uh, I just, you know, I was just in awe. <laughs> so, you know, from that day on, I, I just loved wrestling. And, of course, I always loved police work. So I said as a kid, uh, you know, a lot of kids want to be astronauts and want to be the president. I wanted to be a wrestler and be a cop. And I got to do both. So, very fortunate, very blessed that I got to experience both of my childhood dreams. Okay. So, what made you leave wrestling? Well, um, I wrestled, and, and actually, I started both careers about the same time. I was actually in law enforcement before I got into wrestling. Okay. Um, for just a few months. And uh, then I met a, a, a guy that was a uh, in the wrestling business, and he was a promoter, uh, what we now call referred to as a bootleg circuit. You know, that back then you had to be licensed through the state. Well, you know, the, he he promoted matches in some of the smaller towns, uh, and and he trained me, and, and so I I was booked on some of his cards, and and you know, I moved my way up pretty quick. You know, to where I was in a lot of main events, and then I met Lynn Rossi at the. National Guard Armory, where I used to attend the matches as a kid, mm -hmm. and uh, so he got me hired on with Goulas about uh, 1973, okay. I think it was, and I worked for Goulas for about a year, mm -hmm. and uh, then I got back into law enforcement and had to work weekends and nights. I just wasn't able to make the matches, so I had to go back to just doing it sort of part time. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a great career. You know, I enjoyed it. Uh, I wrestled about 12 years. Uh, during that time, met my wife Peggy. We've been married be forty six years next month. Oh wow! And I uh, have two daughters, Scarlett and Stephanie. And uh, so they were young. Mm -hmm. You know, Scarlett was born in seventy eight, and my youngest daughter was born in eighty two. And uh, when she got a little older than Peggy, they always she, they always went to the matches with me. And uh, so got in a match one night, and they got really upset. Mm -hmm. You know, the girls did. Yeah. On the way home, Peggy told me, said, we're just not going to go anymore because it just upsets the girls. And I said, well, if y'all aren't going to go with me, then I'm going to hang my boots up. So that was my last match. Oh, okay. So you left for the family. That's yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so then you just went straight into law enforcement after then that full just, time. Just doing law enforcement. And then, um, didn't you in a barbecue We did. My shop? family, we moved to the Florence and the show there in 1960. Actually, we moved here the first time about 57, 56. Mm -hmm. And um, then we moved to Huntsville for a year, and then we moved back here in 1960. And my dad and two of his brothers were all in the barbecue business. So I grew up in that business through high school and college. And uh, my dad and, uh, retired in the mid-'80s. My two uncles retired, one of them before dad did, and I think the other one a year or two afterwards. So they were no second generation singletons that picked up the barbecue business. So my wife and I, I was out patrolling and I saw a restaurant building for sale and I went home and talked to her about it and we decided to look into it. So we bought the building and opened up the barbecue place and we were there for a little over 22 years. Now you weren't, you didn't continue with law enforcement during that time, did you? Oh, yeah. Or you yeah. stayed with it? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you did both? Did both. Did both. Yeah, my wife actually managed the restaurant on a day to day business. Basis. I, I always said that was sort of my golf. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, okay. That was sort of my hobby. I'd, I'd put me in the kitchen, give me a spatula, and I can relax. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, uh, you know, this this job, uh, law enforcement, has a lot of stress with it. And yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, I can't relax on the golf course. I could relax in a wrestling ring, but I'm <laughs> too out of shape by then to get back into that. But, yeah. So, but, uh, well, um, kind of got your backstory, kind of. Coming back to the present, um, just to, as you know, we're working on the Casey White, Vicki White story. Um, we just kind of wanted to get your take on it. I mean, just I, 
just kind of seemed to be something that happened out of the blue, something completely and totally out of character for Vicki White to um, get involved in something like this. And so there's a lot of speculation on that. Do you have anything? What was your reaction when you first heard it, when it came to you? Uh, well, it's my the, reaction. The KCSK. Oh, my reaction. My first reaction was that he'd taken her by force mm -hmm. against her will. Uh, he's a very dangerous guy, um, you know, and uh, I was very concerned for her safety mm -hmm. because of that. Uh, that and this was like at three thirty on that afternoon, Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd been gone already about six hours by the time that we realized what was going on. So myself, they called up here and told us that uh, she, they could not get her on the phone, that Casey White was not back in the jail. So myself and another deputy who happened to be here in the building, you know, canvassed the courthouse trying to see if he was up here somewhere in a, in a courtroom or, mm -hmm. or in some other room with, you know, whatever. And of course, he wasn't anywhere in the courthouse. So my first concern was that he had uh, somehow, you know, managed to gain control over her and, and escaped and took him, taking her against her will. Uh, we found the car, you know, shortly afterwards. And then uh, as we started canvassing that area, looking for leads, you know, uh, you know, we were able to start piecing together that, you know, no, she, you know, when I saw the video of them leaving the jail, you know, it was very obvious she wasn't concerned. I mean, she had her back turned to him, which is a no-no. Mm -hmm. You know, she wasn't supposed to be transporting him by herself to start with. There's just so many red flags about that that, you know, hey, she, you know, so our next thought was, well, somebody's gotten her or her family and threatened them, mm -hmm. you know, because this is just not something Vicky would do. Yeah. Obviously something's going on. And, uh, you know, with a little more time and, and you did more in the investigation, you know, we realized that, no, she was a part willing participant. That was very disheartening, you know, very discouraging, because that's not the Vicky any of us knew, mm -hmm. not the Vicky we work with. Uh, you know, she had some things going on in her personal life. She lost her husband mm -hmm. that last January. Yeah. And even though they'd been divorced for years, they maintained a good relationship, which I wish more divorced couples could do. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and she, I, I understand, this sort of helped take care of him. He had, I think, Parkinson's Yeah, disease. I think that's what, yeah. And so, I, you know, we thought, well, maybe that triggered something. You know, I, I don't know that we'll ever know what possessed her to pull this stunt. But. Yeah. Um, so once you realized what was going on, what was your next um, thought process as far as uh, what to do next? Once you realized that she was probably, you know, was a willing participant, what was the next? Well, you know, we just get them off the street, especially him, mm -hmm. you know. Casey White can be a dangerous man. I, I, I really, he's not the kind of guy that would uh, pull a stunt like we saw in Buffalo a few mm -hmm. days ago. Yeah. Just walk up and start shooting people at random. Uh, but he is the kind of guy, if you got in his way, he would hurt you mm -hmm. and possibly kill you. Okay. And we knew that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also knew that if he got cornered by law enforcement, there's a strong possibility he would engage in a gunfight because he had mentioned suicide by cop more than once. Oh, okay. And, uh, so, you know, we, we was concerned. I was personally really concerned for our law enforcement brothers, and, you mm -hmm. know, that they would be at, at risk if they cornered him somewhere. Um, so Casey is now back behind bars, correct? Is he here in Lauderdale County or has no. he been moved? No, he came back here for his arraignment on the escape charges and then we loaded him up and carried him straight back to the State Department of Corrections. Oh, okay. So he's in maximum security now, is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I, you know, I've heard so much about the case and read so much about it and, you know, it being so high profile for as long as it was, um, what would, what is your afterthought now? I mean, as, now that it's kind of, it's not really reached its conclusion because Casey White still has to answer for his part in it, but, you know, it kind of has in the respect that, you know, Vicki White is now no longer with us. Well, the, the escape has come to a conclusion, and it, and it ended the way I said it would, you know, I, and that's what I, you know, I tried to get the message out to Vicki, uh, you know, that, look, you know how this is going to end, you know, mm -hmm. she's seen this play out more than once in her career, you know, we always catch them. Mm -hmm. you know? Did you ever talk to her at all on the phone? During the chase, she never. I tried to call her myself that afternoon when they couldn't get her on the phone. I tried to call her, it went straight to voicemail. 
In fact, uh, with my hands-free phone in my car, I was going to place a phone call uh, one day, and I guess my my computer voice on the other end didn't understand what I said, and it said, call Vicki White. And this was like three or four days in. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll call Vicki White. You know, so I tried again, and of course, it still went straight to voicemail. But, uh, yeah, it... it uh, you know, it just didn't have you personally you seen the crash site or you have been up to Evansville? I haven't been to Evansville. Uh, yes. Um, I had read a story and I don't know if it's true or not because you know sometimes you don't always know what you read is going to be the truth that she had actually um, also there was another officer involved or something along that lines or did, was that just something or was she alone in her actions as no, far we, as this We don't concerned? know if anybody else was involved in this other than Casey White and Vicki White. Okay. Uh, we did when we was going back reviewing video to see what was going on inside the jail mm -hmm. between her and him. We did find a, a video of a couple of three days prior where she carried him out of the jail uh, the first time for mm -hmm. about 10 minutes, which is about enough time to go around the block. What the purpose of that was, I've got investigators working on that now to see what the purpose of that you know, and who was on duty when that happened and what they can tell us about what that was about. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that obviously shouldn't have happened either. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got some questions for some of our staff down there about what, what they did do and didn't do and why. Oh, okay. Um, but she was pretty much in charge of the yes. detention center. Yeah, she was, well, she was assistant director over the operations. Mm -hmm. The operations is basically the, the lockdown, you know, assigning inmates to sales, you know, seeing that inmates are transported to and from court when they're supposed to be, uh, when they're supposed to be transported to state prisons, if we're supposed to go to state prisons, pick someone up to bring them back for trial or something, mm -hmm. uh, which is why Casey White was here to start with. Uh, okay. He had some court hearings coming up. Uh, coming Has the rules back. changed in your jail since all yeah. of this? Have you changed any rules whatsoever well, since the rule, this? we got good rules. You know, the rules were in place, and, and I don't, I've looked and reviewed our policy, and I don't see anything we can do to change the policy to make it any stronger or any better. Mm -hmm. I mean, but when people choose to... Uh, make a choice to violate a policy there's not much way you can prevent that you know mm -hmm. I mean unless you can read their mind I can't read mine so I'm yeah. you know but uh, you know it, it's I mean I think we've got a good strong policy mm -hmm. uh, you just gotta have people you can trust to do the right thing I've got a you know talking about policy then I gotta file this stick of disciplinary actions I've taken against employees who didn't follow policy mm -hmm. you know so yeah. I mean it's not that we ignore our policies you know but you can't address it until it's broken. Yeah, exactly. I understand. And that's not, we didn't mean to. Yeah. You know, we were just, no, you know. no. Mm. Um, I, um, I just think it's a sad situation either way you look. It yeah. is. And, and I hate it for Vicki, you know, and I especially hate it for her family. Her mother's mm -hmm. just very distraught. And, I was going to ask about people. her they're family. Good, yeah, yeah. They're good people. And uh, she just, uh, you know, she's like us. She don't understand it. Yeah. Know? I don't know where well. it's probably one of those things where we'll just always ask why and just yeah. have to um go from there and yeah. just move forward. What kind of citizen was Casey while he was in jail? Did he was he a good model prisoner? Was well, he, did he cause problems? I don't know of any issues we had with him. You know, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh problems we had. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, you know, he shouldn't have had any complaints of what I'm understanding now that he got a little special treatment oh, yeah. from other inmates. Yeah, you know, got extra food and uh, you know. Uh, and heard that he was flipped a cigarette now and then, which are, you know, it's a smoke free facility. They're mm -hmm. not supposed to have cigarettes in there. And the little perks, I guess, for lack of a better word, like that, that he was getting uh, from Vicky that others were not getting. Yeah. Uh, and I guess he was big enough inside the cell block to nobody challenged him about it. Because we, you know, it's not unusual for us to, if, if someone gets a cigarette in one of those cell blocks, uh, there's about a dozen other guys that want it, and we usually have issues. But, I guess with his size, they just didn't mess with him about it and didn't say nothing about it. Yeah, I don't think I would. Um, if I came across him, you know, in some dark alley, I'd yeah. you know, want to run, turn around and go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I think that, you know... What would you say to people out there that's watching that's like... That might be in the same situation, but they hadn't went out and done exactly yeah. what Vicky says? You know, don't do it. I mean, like I said, you, know, you don't get caught. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there's case after case after case uh, throughout the country where the same kind of scenarios happen. Uh, 
uh, maybe not the same methodology, not, maybe not the, using the same method, but where corrections deputies have helped people get out of jail mm -hmm. and they always get caught. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm personally glad it ended as well as it did. You know, mm -hmm. I hate it for Vicki. Yeah. She took the action she did, but aside from that, no one else got hurt. And uh, I think that's a blessing. That is a blessing. Um, I know that um, James Stetson, uh from Evan yeah, you got from, your and the, from so. Indiana um, had said that he wanted to. Um, he was the one that caught. That yeah, he, he's the one that caught. Oh, the, yeah, the yeah, car wash guy. Yeah, yeah have you spoke to him? Guy. Yeah. Have I seen? have not, and of course the reward being offered by the U.S. Marshals. Oh, I don't know. He mentioned that. I yeah, don't, yeah, I don't. Yeah, there's there's um, a lot of back and forth going on for.